And it's hard to think of things that are more evocative of it than motorcycles and 650 million acres of public land that we have here in America. So we're gonna show you how to go motorcycle camping. Are motorcycles dangerous? Yes. Your odds of dying on a motorcycle are 27 times higher than they are in a car. Having said that, there are ways we can address that safety disparity. And the first is really obvious. 50% of all motorcycle deaths involve alcohol. Don't drink and ride and you're twice as safe. Most motorcycle deaths are for riders that aren't wearing a helmet, any helmet at all. So throw one of these on your head and you know, you're probably gonna be okay. But safety gear doesn't stop there. You might have noticed this crazy suit that I'm wearing. Does this look hot? It is, because I'm not, I'm not moving. Once you're riding, heat's not a concern. You get free air conditioning. So this suit is an AeroStitch Road Crafter. It gives you race level protection and a package that can be worn over any regular clothes. And so I've got armor on my knees. I've got armor on my hips. I've got armor on my chest and my back and my elbows, and my forearms and my shoulders. And I've crashed in that suit maybe half a dozen times, never been injured whatsoever, never lost any skin, never broken a bone in it. Anytime you're on a motorcycle, prioritize safety first. If you do get hurt, you want the ability to call for help. So I don't go anywhere without my Garmin in reach. If I crash way out here in the middle of nowhere, I can get help on the way just like that. It's really easy. And even if you have one, it's also a really good idea, especially when you're newer, to ride in groups. Let's talk about one obvious thing that I'm doing wrong here, and that is footwear. Now, we're riding all off-road today, we're taking it easy, we're on a small bike. I compromise my safety by wearing hiking boots so I can walk around and be comfortable, especially if you're a newer rider, if you're going fast, if you're doing anything dangerous, you know, far away from home, a real motorcycle boot is a really good idea. Let's talk about luggage really fast. There's a couple of important notes on luggage for safety again. Um, first is backpack. Uh, obviously, I'm carrying one, but I've been really sure to keep anything hard or sharp out of there. If I was to have a crash and I was to have like a lock or a tent pole or something like that, you know, get pushed into me, that could cause a really severe injury really fast. So only soft, light stuff in your backpack. My tent poles, my stove, everything like that that could injure me is right here in this dry bag bungee to my back seat. Make sure that whatever you put on your bike is not going to come loose and get caught in the back wheel and cause an accident. Going motorcycle camping is kind of like going backpacking, but you don't have to worry so much about weight. So I've brought a little tiny one person ultralight backpacking tent. Weighs nothing, takes up no space. It's just sort of my sleeping room, out of the weather, out of bugs. But for like a nice shelter where I can cook and hang out and enjoy my camp, I've got a nice big tarp that you know here in the desert, I'm gonna hang off my bike. Um, I have brought a backpacking sleep setup, a pad and bag, but I've gone ahead and made sure that's rated for lower temperatures that we're gonna experience here in the summer. So I brought a 15 degree system, even though temperatures tonight probably aren't gonna get below 50. And just that little bit of weight and space that I don't have to worry about so much on the bike is gonna ensure that I'm comfortable no matter what happens. One of the big challenges on a motorcycle is, is food. And I brought a little backpacking setup and I brought some backpacking meals and that's just that's just the compromise you have to make. I'm gonna have a freeze dry meal for dinner because there's just not room in here for a steak and a big stove. Let's talk about the bike. This belongs to my cameraman, Nate, uh, who just bought this on my recommendation. It's a Honda XR650L. And as you can see, this is a long ways from being the sexiest motorcycle. Turn on the TV, watch a YouTube channel, and you're gonna see you know, Ewan McGregor and Charlie Borman uh, riding across the world on giant heavy BMWs or you know, guys riding big KTMs. And you know, bikes like that are really comfortable on the highway. Uh, they look good, you, you know, they're nice motorcycles, but they're very, very, very street oriented, uh, largely just due to their weight. That difference is really, really, really fundamental. If I'm out here riding around the, the gravel road and the rear end starts to slide, I can just sort of stomp on this peg and it snaps back into line. If I drop it, I can pick it up. If it falls on top of me, it doesn't hurt me. You can't say that about some of the bigger bikes. You look at your BMW R1200GS, which sort of defines the, the adventure bike space, easily broken, way too heavy to take off road, not a whole lot of ground clearance. Um, it just makes so much more sense to me 
uh, to take that hit on comfort and on on-road performance and just get a dirt bike. Uh, this XR650L uh, is what's called a dual sport. It's a street legal dirt bike. It has a big old understressed uh, air-cooled single cylinder motor. Um, this thing was designed in the 80s. It hasn't been changed since. Um, you can find parts for this at every uh, mechanic in the world, basically. If Nate rides this to Mexico next year like he's planning and uh, breaks down, um, you know, getting this fixed is going to cost them less than 100 bucks. Um, you know, break down in a BMW uh, in the third world country. And if you can get it fixed, it's going to be a fortune. It's going to be a wait. There's going to be a wait time involved. And where this thing excels, again, is, is where we want to be. It's, it's on dirt. Um, this is fun and fast and, and intuitive to ride off-road in a way that the bigger bikes just aren't. Um, having said that, you know, there are things that a really simple, rugged, cheap dirt bike like this lacks. Uh, look at the pictures of me riding it and you're gonna see I'm really hunched over. Uh, and that's because it's not made for a tall guy like me. The first thing that Nate needs to do, because he's tall too when he, when he gets this home, is fit a set of bar risers. And get those handlebars up where you're standing up right on the bike with your arms at 90 degrees nice and neutral. Um, these tires are the stock tires. Um, you know, these are just cheap. That's all they are. Um, fitting a nice set of like 50-50 um, dirt street high performance tires will make this thing much safer and more enjoyable to ride off road. Um, suspension on this doesn't do a whole lot of the bounce. Uh, upgrading that with you know new fork internals, uh, better valving, better better springs would be smart. Fitting a high quality mono shock on the back would be smart. Uh, maybe some protection parts. Uh, maybe a little bit of luggage to make carrying stuff a little easier. Some just nice soft saddlebags. Maybe a tank bag. And then that's it. Uh, Nate bought this thing. It's got 2,000 miles on it. It's in perfect condition uh, for $5,000. Put another $1,500 into this and you have a bike that will be comfortable and safe and fun to ride all over the world. Uh, it will never break down. It will never cause you trouble. If you crash it, you can fix it with a screwdriver and a hammer. Um, this, to me, is what an adventure bike should be. All together, motorcycle camping is, is really awesome and really freeing and really adventurous. You should come out here and do this. Don't, don't be scared of the bike. Don't be scared to travel. Uh, this is just a cool way to see the world.